Show podcast episode number 25. This week on the show, we're going to be talking about the Motorola X-Phone, the new Chromebook by HP, the HTC M7, and a new HTC device rumored to be coming, and a little talk about Nokia as well, too. Thank you for joining us. This is episode 25. If you haven't tuned into our show, this is the show where we kind of go over the weekly news in the past week, what's been hot, what's been rumored, and what's been breaking the headlines. It's time to get your droid on. These are our special guests here that join me every week. To my left, we got Alex from Detroit. How you doing, Alex? Pretty good. Tired of the snow, but... Wow. Uh, that's, a, that's a fixture in Detroit. Yeah, especially through snowing, the winter. Snowing the last two days straight. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. And sitting to my right, I got Doug. How you doing, Doug Scudder? I'm doing good. I'm wearing pants this week. Oh, that's a good thing, especially <laughs> for the viewers at home. And it's not that kind of show, Doug. Make, oh, keep your sorry. pants on, buddy. That's my other guy now. All righty, all right. <laughs> Our resident gamer, Justin Diaz. How you doing, Justin? Doing pretty good, pretty good. It's not snowing here. It's actually warming up. Gotta love the Northwest. Beautiful. Sorry, uh, sorry, Alex. And Tom, the Duke, Dawson, coming at us from the Royal Nation, yep. UK. How's it going, Tom? Not bad, not bad. No snow, lots no of wind, s- lots of rain. Wow. Sounds like a normal day in the UK. That's right. I was about to say, it's, it's, <laughs> this sort of level, this level of familiarity is fantastic for, for oh. weather organizations across the UK. We're just covering a little bit of weather. It's a nice, uh, what is it, about 75 outside right now here in California. So um, Isn't that cold for you guys? A little bit cold. You know, we put on our parkas here and, uh, you know, turn up the parka. You guys don't know what a parka is. A parka. Parka, yes, a parka, winter coat. You forget, in California, they call, like, windbreakers parkas. That's the... Yes, it's true. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. When we did have have a sort of cold snap here, oh, people were walking around with their hoodies on as their winter jackets. Why not? So, when it gets That's cold, what I do. people put their hoodies on. They still wear their shorts and their flip-flops, but they put on their, <laughs> their, their winter hoodies, you know, the thicker gauge of fleecy. So, uh, <laughs> lucky, you, <laughs> lucky you in California. I'm sitting in Oregon riding around in 27 degree weather in my gourd bike jacket, and you got hoodies walking around in 80 degrees. Exactly. Must be nice. Must be nice. <laughs> Don't worry, we pay for this nice weather. Um, <laughs> all right, guys, I mean, we'll get it started off this week with some more details about the rumored Motorola X phone. We're going to turn it over to Alex, the associate editor here at Android Headlines, to fill us in on a little more details about some rumors that are t- going to give us a little more details on what we're going to be seeing in this new X phone that's supposed to be coming out at Google I.O. What's the what, what's the rumors, Alex? Well, the latest rumors are saying that it's going to have a battery the size of the Razer Max, so around 3,300 milliamps or probably higher. Um, it's gonna have the Sony Exmor RS sensor, uh, full Kevlar body. I think there's a Kevlar chassis too that it's supposed to have, along with a stock Android 5.0, which is probably gonna be key lime pie. Uh, it's also supposed to have up to 128 gigabytes of storage. That sounds like is, a bit of a dream dream list yeah. there on that part. But uh, de- definitely, I mean. It, the camera that they're putting in their 13 megapixel version um, from Sony is supposed to be a really great camera and um, could get, you know, pretty close to DSLR uh, quality photos on this. So it, it definitely looks like this could be a sweet camera coming in there. The Kevlar body, I don't know. I guess if maybe if you're living in the hood, that could be an important thing. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alex is in Detroit and in a very dangerous neighborhood, so uh, this this could be a great phone for him. Stock Android 5.0, of course, Key Lime Pie first phone, um, you know, and there's also talk that possibly this could be the phone that gets launched at Google I.O., which would be kind of nice because the Nexus devices, as we know, get launched in the fall, 
So this would kind of be an exciting uh, device to be launched at Google I.O. Um, battery life, uh, I, I would like to see all phones come with this type of battery life. How about you guys? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I can I have handle a, some, uh, some battery. Yeah, I have a 4400 on my S3. I love it. Jesus Christ, how fat is that phone back? <laughs> it, it's not he, that fat. It's in a power pack. It goes on his back in a backpack. Yeah, it's, about as, it's about as thick as the HTC uh, tilt that AT and T had back in the day. That's nice. That uh, that's more like the Thunderbolt <laughs> with that three-hour battery. <laughs> I was about to say the Thunderbolt had great battery life. Yeah, well, it had the kickstand, so it was great. Yeah, it was great battery life if you had the thing plugged into the wall all the time. Yeah. So this uh, Motorola X phone, we've heard a couple of rumors. Alex, there's there's a second part that kind of came to it as well, too, that we got some more confirmation out of it last week. Last week um, might be something we could take it with a grain of salt, but it might add a little, um, you know, weight to the rumor. What was that? Yeah, Motorola posted a um, job on LinkedIn, and it actually has Xphone in the title. If they're looking for a senior director of product management for the Xphone. I don't know if that means it's probably not coming out this year or if it's coming out later, or if you know, it's just then, a marketing employee. You know, and that, that's some good points. When we saw that rumor kind of pop up there, it was like, hmm, did someone throw that up as a fake to throw people off or just to get people talking? Because if, you know, there's any truth to the x coming out and Google I.O. is its launch time, I don't think you'd be hiring a product manager kind of around now. Um, you know, they're looking for a senior director product management. Um, unless somebody died from the team and they're looking to quickly fill somebody in into that position, <laughs> I'm thinking that, you know, you know and, and also the X phone right in the title kind of kind is like, hmm. Nice know, one, man. Nice one. It, it'd be, it, it's the equivalence of, of, of Apple putting, you know, uh, director product management for iPhone 6 or something like that. It's just one of those type of slip-ups that you don't really see just because, you know, it's a rumored thing and they like to keep this stuff, you know, as tightly lipped as possible. So we'll see. Uh, I'm sure we're going to be hearing a lot more rumors as it comes out, you know, some fake benchmarks from here and there. But until we get some uh, solid uh, product shots that haven't been Photoshopped on it, we'll just keep enjoying the rumors until then. Now, uh, there's a new, let's move on to our next story, you guys. The next story today, uh, I'll go over to our resident Chromebook fan, Tom Dawson, <laughs> who happens to be using a Chromebook and has an old Chromebook as well, too, a C48, which he hates, but he's uh, likes no, no, no. this. I, I have, I have a, 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 an affection for it, but it's so damn slow. I mean, it's just... <laughs> That terrible. Well, let's talk about this new one that came out today. Hopefully, that's a little bit faster. Well, what's the story on that? I, I... Um, yeah, so um, we we um, we all knew that HP were uh, entering the uh, Chromebook, the Chromebook game with um, you know a, a pavilion version of their sort of mid-range to sort of you know budget sort of laptops um, with a Chromebook because of uh, their fantastic. Back backdoor entry or whatever you could just look at the PDF. We covered it a while back, but um, now it's official. You can uh, go and buy it straight from HP, um, and uh, it's a little bit different from the uh, from the other from the Acer C7 and the Samsung Chromebook from um, from the end of last year. Uh, in that it's got a 14-inch um, LED display. It's got the same uh, Intel Celeron 847 clocked at 1.1 gigahertz. That's in the uh, uh, Acer C7, it's got an HD webcam, 16 gigabyte SSD, 2 gigabytes of RAM, uh, the usual uh, dual antenna Wi-Fi, 3 USB 2 ports, um, a card reader, an Ethernet port, HDMI out, a four uh, and a four cell lithium ion battery that's rated for um, a fairly disappointing four hours. But and that's um, that's HP's Chromebook. It's uh, retailing for $330, which uh, compared to the Acer. Um, the Acer C7 at two hundred dollars is uh, is a little bit steep for um, to pay for like the extra size when you're getting the same processor, the same amount of RAM, and um, importantly the same screen resolution. So it depends on how much you value 
decent. Is it the same quality. screen size? Did you say top? No, no, it's, it's um, this. The HP is at uh, 14 inch, and the Acer is 11.6, but it's the same screen resolution. It's still 1366 by 768. Now, here's, now I noticed in your article for people that want to see you, check it out on our site. Um, it's a it, it's a sharp looking Chromebook. Definitely would not throw that thing out. Um, but the little underwhelming a little bit in the in in the processor speed, and maybe they did that for for battery life consumption. <laughs> That. Yeah, I mean, the, um, it's the same the same uh, sort of range of Celeron is used in uh, the super high end. Well, not super high end. There was the uh, the uh, you know the Samsung series five fifty. Uh, that's got a Celeron clocked at one point seven, one point six, I think. So, I mean, it's not um, a fantastic processor, but for the most part, it, it'll churn through a seven twenty p YouTube. Uh, it'll do Netflix. It, it, it's it's it'll do everything you want it to. It just won't do it. As fast or as immediately as pretty much any other laptop on the shelf. Now, now you you have the Sam the Samsung Chromebook yourself at home. Um, mm. how, how do you find the, the the speed when when using it? I mean, you use it quite quite a lot for work. How how yeah, does I mean, it stack uh, up? For, you the know, the two fifty uh, the two fifty um, Samsung uh, has a uh, the um, Exynos fifty two fifty ARM processor, the one that's in the Nexus ten, and. Um, for the most part, it's pretty. It's pretty snappy. It's um, it might take a little bit longer to to get places, but it's pretty um immediate. You know, there's no sort of um, wait. I mean, it takes longer to get there, but it's quite snappy and uh, scrolling is really nice and smooth. Um, but there are some problems uh, with running an ARM processor. There's no Netflix support yet. So that's coming soon. Um, and also, it, it the um the issue with it being ARM is that Google haven't spent a lot of time. With Chrome OS on ARM-based processors, so they know how to use Intel processors. They've been doing it since the CR48, almost like three years ago now. So they they know what they're doing when it comes to Intel stuff. So you know, I I like I like the idea of the Chromebook, and I wouldn't mind trying one out myself for sure. Um, you know, to use as a daily driver. The one thing that kind of puts me off a little bit is a little bit of the specs. I don't know. I guess. You know, I want to see a quad core in there at least, or something, or you know, or a dual core in there that can handle, you know, maybe some 1080p type of videos on there. That's the well, one the th thing about it is, is that like, why would you want to watch um, a, a video at 1920 by 1080 on a display that's only 1366 by 768? Well, I would want a 15 or 17 inch Chromebook, is what <laughs> I'd want. No, I'm just saying, you know, that, that, you know, we're starting to see an adoption of a lot more Chromebooks, and I wonder if we might see a trend of boosting up some of the specs mm. in the future. Well, um, I think um, price is, is probably the main reason, because obviously there's no sort of, um, the infamous Windows tax isn't present when you buy a, a Chromebook, but Intel, Intel famously want a lot of the profits, so even though you're buying their cheapest chip, Chipzilla still probably want quite a bit of money for it. So let's throw let's throw an AMD processor or ARM or or a Samsung Exynos press processor in yeah. it. Exynos five octa. Yeah, let's cut it. Yeah, let's cut yeah. Out. Let's put an <laughs> if I would buy it in, I would buy like five. You buy five. Okay. Yeah, I buy five. Why? Just, just because. <laughs> in fact, no. I don't, if I bought if if they had an Exynos um the Exynos five octa in it, I would have to buy eight, obviously. So. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I, and I, I foresee that as we start getting more more in there. Um, your, your Samsung comes with an Intel processor in it. Um, no, the um, the the two hundred and fifty dollar Samsung is uh, the Exynos fifty two fifty clock at one point seven. But the Series five five fifty, which is still on sale, the the most expensive Chromebook that has um, a one point seven gigahertz Celeron in it. All right. Well, thank you very much for that, Tom, and the deep insight into that. And uh, we'll actually stick with you for a couple of minutes here because I know you have some more news with us in regards to that new HTC M7 device coming out. Some news broke today on it. And uh, what's going on with uh, this new camera stuff that we that we heard about earlier today? Yeah. Well, I'm um, carrying on with uh, HTC's fantastic, uh, well kept secret that is the M7. Uh, <laughs> There's um, some news coming out that uh, HTC are once again going to try and push, um, you know, push their uh, imaging uh, prowess on the phone, and um, it looks like they might be uh, coining a new phrase uh, of 
uh, Ultra Pixel. Ultra Pixels. Yeah. Now they um, develop their own camera, I take it. Well, I mean, they, they, um, they, uh, the, the one series came with uh, Image Sense, and they made a big deal out of Image Sense. Um, but um, basically, this, this sort of Ultra Pixel thing is uh, something we've seen in um, a few sort of um, uh, regular digital cameras before. Uh, Sigma's uh, Foveon X3 had the same sort of thing. So we've heard that the M7 is going to come with a 30 megapixel camera. Um, but this new rumor suggests that it's, they're going to call it, um, you know, it's going to have an ultra pixel camera because uh, to make up the 13 megapixels, it's going to take um, four point. It's going to take three 4.3 megapixel photos and then combine them together and make a Basically, ultra pixel. Make an make an HDR picture in a sense is what what it's almost saying, right? Yeah, it's basically sort of. Um, I think they're going to be trying to push um, quality because we all know that like the megapixel wars, as they were known, it, they don't really mean a lot because you can have, you know, you can go and buy like a camera for I don't know, like, <coughs> you, you know, um, a couple hundred dollars, and it'll have like a fourteen point two megapixel in it. But then you spend like a little extra, and it's only got like a, a twelve, and the twelve will look better every time because it's you know if it's more expensive and it's got more work into it. So I think they're going to try and push. Um, Quality with this whole ultra pixel thing and sort of combine Which, lots of different stuff together. You know, for us us uh, Android lovers and hardware tech guys, sometimes the camera stuff kind of gets thrown to the back back burner because you know we're all worried about the processor and the RAM and the specs and all that stuff. But cameras are a really important part of you know a lot of consumers when they're purchasing them there because a lot of times now people are getting away from their point and shoots and you know and they're almost starting to venture into the DSLR areas now where the picture quality is right up there you know obviously not you know comparable to the DSLR that wouldn't go that far but I'm saying it's borderline between you know an, a, a budget DSLR and a high quality point and shoot so it's you know I I'm you know I've, I haven't took my camera out of the house in a year I, I use my phone specifically now for, for all all of my image terrible you know, and well, you know, sometimes you don't always get the best picture on your phone. Um, a lot well, of times, it's, say, they it's say that um, they say that the best camera is the camera that you have on you. So, exactly. you know, there's a big there's a big market for that. And, and let's be honest, you know, so, I mean, with the rise of Google Plus and um, uh, Snapseed and uh, you know uh, Instagram's, uh, you know, who isn't on Instagram? Even if you don't use Instagram a lot, you know, who isn't on Instagram these days? Um, unless you exited because you were mad at them. Um, you know, so there's a lot of people that you know sort of are going to be drawn in by a high quality camera. I mean, they tried it with the one series, but then the S, the, you know, the S3 came out, and then without actually having anything fancy in their camera, they had a better image. So. Yeah, and I mean, like you said, you know, it's it's what's on you. So if you're carrying your phone around and it's got a great camera on it, you're going to forget about buying cameras. So it's definitely a plus. You know, how many of you guys? I mean. Are you using your phones, you know, as strictly as cameras, uh, or do you still have cameras? Doug, do you, do you? I've never purchased a camera in my whole life. I don't take very many pictures, so I'm no. not. I'm not really qualified. All right, to we'll be in this conversation. We'll <laughs> <on>. <laughs> <laughs> so you, those family moments, hanging out with a girlfriend or something like that. Is um, it cameras, or or are you just using the smartphone? Using using the phone, I mean, you know, sometime in later in life, I'd like to have a DSLR, you know, just for like other stuff. But when it comes to like ninety five percent of the film, uh, the photos, it's it's pretty much exclusively phones. You know, girlfriend just got the Note two. I got the Nexus. Hoping to go for maybe a Note two or a Nexus four myself. So uh, it, it's just it's easy to take because I use everything else on it. It, the picture's right there too. Why not? I use it for literally every photo I have. We got the photo spear. That's that's you know what DSLR is going to give me that. Exactly. <laughs> None. Exactly. exactly. So Alex, how about you? I know you have a camera for work that you have. And yeah, I only use it for that. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> I use my phone for everything else. Tom, what about you? Is it mostly your phone? Um, no, well, I, I don't take I a lot of photos. I know you fancy pictures a little. 
I am. Um, I don't take a lot of uh, photos with my phone. Uh, I have. A, I have a DSLR. I have an old um, a Sony Alpha, uh, which I mainly bought because I can use old uh, Konica uh, Minolta lenses with it. Um, so I think for me, it's optics. Like you know, if, if someone bought, if they bought out a camera where I could atta properly attach lenses to it, I would be all over that. Like that phone would go with me everywhere. But you know, they can they can do all they want with the sensor. But until someone gives me some decent optics, I'm. I'm not interested. Well, I have, I'll, I'll just say I have like a Canon T3 DSLR with a couple of lenses, and it hasn't left my uh, little tech tech box there in about a year, um, it, which is kind of bad because it's a beautiful camera, mm. takes great pictures, but I can't be bothered with it because, you know, the thing is bulky. You know, a heavy DSLR carrying that thing around, all the lenses, yeah, and memory heavy. cards. Heavy. I'm like, you know, it's 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 almost as heavy as my wife's purse. So it's like, you know, it's it's, it's not something I want to be running around with too often. You know, and how do you know when you're going to take a picture? You know, unless you're going out to an event, you know, a birthday, something that's kind of scheduled. Otherwise, you know, most pictures are, you know, kind of cusp of the moment. You know, and it would be nice to kind of see, you know, actually Alex has the Galaxy camera right now. So let's go to him for a minute. Alex, how are you liking the Galaxy camera? Um, you know, is what, do you see a lot of benefits over using just a standard camera from it? I like it a lot because it's got Dropbox and everything in there, so you take pictures, it's automatically uploaded there. And same thing with Google Plus. I don't know, it's kind of heavier than my camera, but I like it. What about picture quality? Is it? I mean, obviously, you know. It's you know maybe the one you have is not as high quality, but how how are the pictures? Let's say in in comparison to a phone wise. Oh, they're a lot better. A lot better. But it's it's sixteen megapixels versus eight. Yeah, and we're also it's also f yeah. an extra five hundred dollars just just for a camera, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And, and I think you're tied to a two year contract at that. I'm not sure. Oh, all right, Alex, and we'll stick with you here because a story came out today about uh, another HTC device um, that's just kind of got thrown into the fire today. What's what's the talk about this? Well, today there is a, um, a HTC insider. He leaked information about the DLX Plus, which the DLX is what the Droid DNA was coding before it became the Droid DNA. And it's got a lot of the same specs as the M7, including a 4.7 inch 1080p display, Snapdragon S4 Pro processor clocked at 1.7 gigahertz, uh, two gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of internal storage, and it does have a micro SD card slot, along with a 13 megapixel camera on the back and 2.1 megapixel on the front, and then all your standard Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS, uh, Android Jelly Bean, they don't state if it's 4.1 or 4.2, and since 5.0. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking at the Droid DNA now, and this this is actually smaller than the Droid DNA itself, yeah. by about 0.3 inches. It's got the same processor almost, right? Uh, it's clocked a little bit higher. The DNA is 1.5, but it's the same one. Okay, and it's got the same amount of RAM, a little bit more um, internal storage. Um, Sense 5.0 would would be the same thing, right? Or no, that only has yeah, Sense 4.1. Yeah, it's 4 plus. 4.5. So this is this is <laughs> a, this is a, a whole lot different than what we're seeing out of the out of the original Droid DNA. Not really. It's like so, the Droid DNA Plus or whatever. <laughs> plus or, DNA or something. I mean, it's already got yeah. a 1080p screen. It's not really HD because it's smaller. Yeah. Although it's more pixels per inch. I think it's 468. And they're probably going to throw a bigger battery in it just to make it, you know, sexier. Or yeah, because they don't say anything about a battery in this leak. So, so they, this phone is, is, you know, could, could we be looking at just maybe a potential M7 clone here. Somebody got mixed up on the specs. Because this thing looks like a DNA, and I can't understand why Verizon would go and drop drop this phone, you know, considering that it kind of seems like it's only a little bit of an upgrade. 
I don't know. Ryzen does whatever they want to do anyway, so. That's, that's right, they do. They slap their logo on the front of a Note 2 button. Like a yeah, they're going to put it in the... They're gonna put it on the back button for this one, probably. <laughs> it's gonna or, be on the. It's gonna be right on the camera t- sensor lens. Yeah, I was gonna say that. <laughs> so and they got their own watermark in there. Well, you know the only the only thing that holds any weight on this rumor is that I know how HTC likes to not really innovate and bring out new phones. They like to make three phones that are all kind of the same and just give them some different names and say that it's a new phone. So. Yeah. Throw plus on the end of it. Exactly, and and keeping on that note, let's go over to Justin. He has a he has a little more HTC news. We gave HTC a pretty hard time in the past week or two, and this week isn't going to be anything different. No so, better, no better at all. There's there's some great news out of here that was reported by Tom, but great Justin news. is going to tell the story. What's the story with HTC today? That we heard heard a little more news out of that camp today. Well, things things uh, things are you know seem to be getting bleaker, darker for HTC. You know, I've, in my opinion, uh, HTC not doing so great. I know they got that great news about the M7. Kind of got to hold my breath until that comes out to see what what good good news comes out of them uh, for that device. But you know, all this talk. I think I think last year we had a similar conversation on one of the first shows about how things were going with. Uh, HTC from 2011, and and the One Series was just starting to come out, and uh, Tom was loving his One X, and and I was I was talking about us receiving the One S at T-Mobile, and you know uh, the the One Series was supposed to do what they're uh, gonna have to do for 2013, and and it didn't. I, so they're they're really losing ground with some of their sales, um, you know, starting the first month, and they're already looking at being 17 percent below what they had the last three months. So that's you know not looking good for them. And uh, because of that, I guess they're looking to uh, to China to kind of open up a little bit more uh, sales ground, gain some ground back with what they had lost over here. So, um, so the story um, is don't know how already, that's going to pan out, but they're already down 17 percent revenue that's pretty, drops. What they're warning for the first quarter, and we're not mm-hmm. even out of the first quarter, and they're predicting that things are not. That's like, bad. I mean, that's pretty bad, you know. So that's causing them to to consider dropping prices uh, you know elsewhere to make up ground like I think their current their current device price is uh, right around 320 bucks is their cheapest lowest price phone in China right now and they're they're saying they're considering going you know below that uh, to 1000 yuan you know but what they're at right now is 1999 almost almost uh, double what they're considering going below uh, too so that's that's I don't know. That's to me. That's bad. That's so bad. Like <laughs> it is. It is. And I mean, you know, now HCC, we we all know in the past year they've had some real rough financial times. Their stocks took a hit. They've gotten bailed bailed out a bit too, as well from the Taiwanese banks. And um, you know, thing, things aren't looking good. And they fired off their uh, chief mar- marketing officers as well too. Obviously, things are not going well over there. They even admitted. We had Peter Chow admit that uh, you know that they failed in the marketing in the past year. And you know, and I I think you know you can't just sol- solely blame the marketing department on it's that. It's not I all mean, the marketing department's fault. It, it, I mean, they don't have a lot. To, they don't have everything to do with it. It's they they really you know we they they launched last year their X1 series and you know which which was a good series in its own you know nothing wrong wrong with the phones um, but the phones become quickly dated because you know any as you know the Android smartphone market it moves like at neck breaking speeds you know what was cool six months ago is outdated in six months and instead of innovating you know and pushing out something with a little faster a little cooler and stuff like that you know they just do a little tweak and then rebrand it and try to sell it and consumers are on to that they're on to what HTC is doing and that's obviously showing up in their sales the game's up HTC the game's up come on that's right yeah the consumers are on to their shit right so, yeah, I mean, I think um, HCC uh, played a dangerous game last year, and, and they've been doing it for a while. They, they they want to be first, but being first does not does not help. It's I mean, not it's always like, it's it's like being the first person at the party. You don't want to be the first to the party. You don't no. want to be the last one out of the party. You want to be fashionably late, and you want to make your voice heard when you get there. 
uh, instead of being the first person there and you're like the weirdo that showed up first and nobody else is going, so you're just kind of like standing around and HTC's been doing that. You know, they need to like give it some more time to put out a quality device that mm. hits on all fronts. And not that their stuff isn't necessarily quality. The One Series has been great devices, but... You know, the uh, one, one if you take a look at the One Series last year, it was great when it launched and popularity... But until the Droid DNA came out, which is only on Verizon, there was nothing in between. They had that One X Plus, which was an AT&T exclusive that, you know, basically went nowhere, no marketing, nothing behind it. It's like, why even, why even fucking bother? You know yeah, I mean? I mean, I think um, HTC needs to sort of, uh, I don't think, like, uh, I think they need to, like, release less models or stick to their guns sort of thing because... They did it the, even last year. They talked about sticking to those guns, and they'd still yeah exactly. Do it. Then yeah, I mean twenty you know the the the, the year they said they were gonna that were gonna stop, they went back in time. It's like you know the one X the one X compared to the Galaxy S three. I mean they're they're very similar. They both got four point seven, four point eight, eight uh, seven twenty p displays, quad core over here anyway. The same processor in the states, you know. So, but then like the one S was like. You know, it was a nice looking device, but it, it got dated really quickly. And then there was that the one V that like never showed up anywhere. And then it's just yeah, like it was X, version. X plus and you know they yeah, just Yeah, and it's just sort of they just sort of iterated and, and instead of sort of having like you know, two or three devices on a number of different carriers you know, they just um carried on doing the same thing. You know, and and the one thing is I wanna say is that, you know, why not throw out, you know, the, the Galaxy S3 comes out, you know, it's dominating, it's going crazy, you know, and they have this HTC Droid DNA coming out, and they talked about, you know, putting out a butterfly or, or deluxe or whatever. Will that not be the phone that you would want to drop out there to convince, you know, potentially Samsung customers to come over and buy an HTC device? That was a phone that had excitement and buzz and, you know, and, and that was the type of devices that they needed to get back on top. But instead, they go into an exclusive agreement with Verizon and screw the rest of the fucking world over except for China from, you know, creating any type of buzz for their products. Unless you're on Verizon and, you know, in a very small market share. So, I mean, I know but, uh, China's got a lot of people and they can definitely make some ground up, but... The West is big with uh, with the whole tech. I mean, look at Samsung, look at Apple. They've done very well. So they really need to kind of put something out here that's going to hit hard. For yeah, and this carrier exclusive stuff is just not going to cut it. That's but, no, it's crap. I mean, Samsung did that with, with some stuff, and look how look how much exponentially they grew by making things non exclusive with like the S3. I mean, by putting that across all carriers and making it the same, it's already yeah. the best selling phone out there. I mean, yeah, I mean that does wonders for your for your brand. I mean, it's like absolutely, it makes sense. Like, how many times we've we've said that like, if I can't get like a particular Samsung phone on, uh, you know, on Verizon or Sprint, I'm not going to blame Verizon or Sprint. I'm I'm just going to straight up blame Samsung. If you can't, sure. if you can't sort out distribution or you can't, if you've not got enough sort of standing in the in the industry to sort of negotiate launches, then you clearly aren't going to make that good a go of it sort of thing. And I'm I'm gonna go one step farther here than you guys and I am gonna blame the obviously the CEO of this because he's the guy who's leads everything. And you know, what's his name there? Peter Chow. Um, you know, he's he's kinda like the main guy over there and he, he directs the traffic over there pretty well and has a tight ship. And he's the guy that, you know, kinda leads up everything and they're just not getting it. His vision is kind of being lacked, you know, um, it's, it's not being carried out properly or maybe they're just lacking the proper vision over there. But I think it's kind of a time where he's had his kick at the can with HTC in the last couple of years in, you know, where other guys are going up with increased share, he's getting decreased share. Um, so it's kind of a time where they need some fresh blood in there, some new thinking. You know, change up the devices so they don't look the same. Throw in some, you know, they have they have Windows devices that have colored devices. Why are we not, you know, why would HTC not throw out, you know, yellow, orange, and red, and purple devices? You know, do a, just change up something. Well, they you know, did that like, with the uh, 8.1X. They did a colored device. They put, like, uh, maybe they're going to put out more. It's a Windows 8 phone. 
I think that's a Microsoft thing more than anything. I think it's um, it is more of a Microsoft thing, yeah. but I mean, yeah, Nokia Microsoft does doesn't own the patented colors, and HP. Oh, yeah. sure. <laughs> you got to double check. <laughs> he needs a little yeah. bit of a, a, a something, you know. And you have these consumers out there who are not hardcore fans like us, who you know stick with a black or whatever. Playing Jane phone is more about what what's inside. But you know, right. they get a girl coming in. You know, maybe she wants a purple. Maybe she wants a red or something. You know. I hear that every day. Where's purple? Yeah. Where's pink? Exactly. Oh, I, got, I got a purple case for you right here. Sounds like that good with the what is it the the. Fleur collection or whatever the hell they've got with the with the phones with all the flowers on it or yeah, some shit. Yeah. They've got a cover. You Even know, Motorola I, have that cover. They're just they're yeah. they're not they're you know ne they're being narrow minded in their thinking and you know what's what's there? I got some fresh thinking for them. I'll take that job. For sure. <laughs> and, oh, and that's I'm actually looking for a job. There. <laughs> they're they're not they're not they're not listening to the consumers or watching the trends. Obviously, no you know what, no, and I'll tell you what the what the the biggest indication is is the M7, okay? Unless unless we're totally in denial and being lied to, um, the M7 is not going to blow anybody away. I mean, it's going to be a great device in its own way, but is it going to you know have people drop their Galaxy S3s and say I got to have the M7? I don't think so. I think people no. are going to wait for the S4. People own the S3. Now, if you cannot turn, you know, someone off of another device, get them out to buy buy yours. You're doing something wrong. You need to go back to the drawing board. And you know, I think HTC. It's going to be a rough year for them, and I don't see the CEO making it through the year because I don't see um, HTC managing the storm uh, through this year. And I don't think the M7 is going to be the answer to turn things around. I think they'll have a better quarter because they'll sell a few more devices, but I think by quarter three and four, it's going to be back to the same story, and by quarter four, I think uh, the CEO is going to be unemployed for Christmas. They, you know, I, I know they're going to get him to the summer, and then they're going to give him that time. If they didn't get anything around by the summertime, they're going to boot him, and they're going to find somebody else. They should do. Give yeah. him six months, turn it around, no, second half of the year to somebody else. I know that we already talked about the marketing, but I honestly do put a lot of this at the feet of HTC's marketing. And I mean, because they don't have horrible devices, but they just can't sell them because they don't get their message out. I was just mm -hmm. looking at HTC's Google Plus page, the official HTC page, they, they share one post per day that's talking about one of their products with the picture. Like, that's a perfect example. Hey, guess where the Android community is? They're on Google+. Guess what you're doing? You're sharing one advertisement for your product every day. You're not trying to have a conversation with your consumers. Now, obviously, social media is just one part of their marketing, and Google+, Plus is just one part of their social media outreach. I get that. But at the same time, I think it's very indicative. They're not trying to have a conversation with consumers. They're not trying to innovate. They're not trying to find out what people are looking for or find out who their customers are and communicate with them. They're just trying to crank out one more mediocre phone, and they're expecting something amazing to happen, and it's just not going to work. Like, like, like they said last year, HDC, that uh, people want thinner phones, not better batteries. That was uh, living proof. That <laughs> That's a perfect <laughs> example. That's a bunch of garbage. People don't want. They don't want a forfeit battery life for a thinner phone. Nobody they want a thinner phone that they can carry in their pro pocket that is yeah. dead because the battery oh, like. is <laughs> nice and thin. A small brick. A That's small what we want. Weight, small paperweight. Small paperweight in your pocket. If your Paris well, Hilton I mean, and all you wear are uh, cocktail room. dresses, then that's what you want. You want the thinnest phone possible with no battery life. Because hey, it dies. I'll go down to the corner store and I'll buy another one. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, for the rest of us people, we we need you know battery life. It's yeah. got to be a good mix. I mean, I mean, this would be um, a more comfortable. Uh, the One X would be more comfortable in the hand if it was a little bit thicker. Um, and you know what? If it's a little bit thicker and lasts me an extra hour at most throughout the day. Uh, I'm I'm happy with that. Hours a lot, and you know, an hour is. You know, if your if your device is dying quick, you're gonna be calling it a piece of shit, even no matter how great that. Oh phone. yeah, it, this is all awesome. you're at the home. This creates a poor user experience at the end of the day, especially when you're talking LTE. Yeah, exactly. Now you know what, guys. Let's move on from this story because HTC is coming out in the next couple of weeks with uh, their devices, so we're gonna have lots of time to uh, give them hard time. Um, 
<laughs> Let's go back over here to Doug, who has uh, covered a story earlier for us today about Nokia. And uh, I just love to talk about the CEO of Nokia, and he had a couple of uh, words for us see. today. And so uh, let's turn it over to Doug, and Doug's going to tell us what uh, the CEO of Nokia had to say about Android today. Well, basically, uh, the CEO of Nokia was getting interviewed about whether or not they're going to be moving into the tablet market. And obviously, uh, Nokia has had Lumina recently, which is the Windows phone. And so, so people are kind of wondering what's next for them. Um, and I won't, I won't take the time to read his quotes, but he made it pretty obvious that they are definitely going to be releasing a, ta a, a tablet in the near future, which of course means that they probably already have a tablet in development. But it probably isn't going to be an Android tablet. And I gotta say, like, I know this is an Android podcast. I get that. But I'm not sure that he's wrong. They have had a little bit of success with the Windows phone, the Lumina 920. And it does make sense that they would then start to sell Windows tablets to go along with that. Um, but at the same time, like his argument, that the argument that the, uh, that I, I, what's his name here? The, the guy who's the head of uh, Nokia. Steve the argument, yes, thank you. Um, the argument he's making is that, uh, that basically the Android tablet market is a little crowded and that it would be really hard to, to make some noise and get noticed. And he's not wrong. Um, obviously, there is an Android tablet, I mean, literally, you can find Android tablets for $50, you know, some of the Acer crazy cheap ones they're selling in the third world, all the way up to, you know, the Asus Transformer Infinity, which is what, like like six or 700 bucks, something like that. There are an Android tablet for everyone. They're, they're in every shape and size. They come with keyboards. They come without keyboards. I mean, I, I, I maybe there isn't a lot of room for Nokia to come up with a new idea and make some noise and make some attention. But at the same time, if they really go all in with the Windows Phone, the, the, the Microsoft Surface software, and they fail, they could be in really big trouble. But, I, you know, obviously Windows Phone is, is nothing anywhere compared to where Android well, is or where just, Apple is. Just interrupt you for a second, Doug. He did say in his story, though, that he would consider any option, and I think that's where we kind of, you know, ran a little Titan. bit with, with the story is that he would consider any option, which Maybe. is something he's kind of, you know, it, which is actually for Elop is is a huge statement because right. before he would have totally just written it off and took mm. you know, a chance to totally bash and stomp on and Android. Steve Ballmer's best friend. Exactly, and I mean, and I think it, it digs a little deeper. Um, you know, with 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 Elop, he's you know he's heavily in bed with Microsoft. There's there's no no doubt about it. Everyone knows. A couple of years ago, he decided to go Microsoft versus Android. You know whether you know whether that was the right or the wrong decision. All I have to say is you know market share three percent. Okay, three percent worldwide. North America, 2.3% worldwide. Now, what do I mean by market share? Okay, 3% of the world's smartphones are running Windows Phone. Okay, that's 3%. That's not a lot of phones. Now, I agree with you. Now, that's just not Nokia, guys. We're talking HTC. We're talking Samsung. We're talking about whoever the hell else is rolling out Windows Phone. So there may be on 1% of phones out there yeah. for smartphones because they don't have their own operating system anymore. Right? I agree with you. I so agree with we're, you. We're only talking 1% of the market share worldwide is Elop involved in. Maybe it's a little bit more because you know maybe he's selling the majority of, of, of the Windows phones. Maybe it's one and a half. Maybe even two. But 2% 2 of worldwide market he's involved with. And he's totally writing off Android. So, you know, sure. how many phones do you really want to sell? I have to ask this guy at the end of the day. And then he goes on to say, okay, Android, well, you know, they got HTC, and now they got Samsung who's blowing up. Well, you know what? How many phones of Android are being sold? How much market share is there? Okay. Now, if you were, if you were selling Android, you probably would have a larger market share than you have right now, even with all the other competitors out there. 
Not yeah. to mention, let's think about this. The Nokia smartphones back in the day were the shit. I can't even tell you how awesome they were. They I mean, were. up until now, like the last few years, Samsung's had a great ride with the Galaxies. But before then, Samsung's always made quality stuff. Symbian. Like, nobody really cared too much, man. I always wanted a Nokia and, N series phone. Always. Yeah, they were, like, yeah, yeah they the, were N -series, the N series was cool. Like you saw someone with an N series, and you were like, ah, that, was that dude, yeah, that that dude was going places. And see, if they, if, they could, if they could take that kind of aspect with the quality devices they used to have and put Android on it, I think people would be excited about it because people know Nokia, they know the name. I, know, I, I agree with you, and they are just straight up late to the party. With yeah. like they they missed an opportunity. They could easily be where Samsung is right now. If three or four years ago they had been like, "Wow, this Android thing is obviously going to be huge," and and Let's they had out. that choice. They had yes, that they choice, and they, they made the wrong choice. They can still come back. They can still come back though. Let's not let's let's they, let's they, have they, BlackBerry they take that yeah. seat and be the one loser that didn't take up Android and let them fall off the map. Nokia <laughs> needs to hurry up and uh, and get their game you like, know, together. And, and what Justin was saying, you know, look at their hardware. Back in the day, it was good. Even the, you know, I don't think there's a person here that won't disagree that the Lumina phone isn't a nice looking phone. <laughs> the problem with the Lumina phone is it's, it's running Windows, okay? And that's right. and that's the same problem that everyone over the world is having with these phones and why it only has a three percent market share is because people don't want Windows phones. If I they, agree with you. I agree with you. And just for the sake of devil's off. advocate, just just for the sake of playing devil's advocate, I mean, if you look at where Android was when it was new, you know, it takes some time to work out the bugs in an operating system to get the developer community behind it. And honestly, I don't see Windows taking market share from Android. I don't really think that's going to happen. What I do think is going to happen, and obviously I could be wrong. This is just my guess. What I think is going to happen is that over the next two or three years, as people are getting more and more fed up with Apple's just general crap, that they're going to start moving towards a Windows phone. It's a closed operating system, but it is something that is going to interact with their their Xbox uh, 720 and their, you know, maybe the, the one PC that gets sold two or three years from now. Uh, I mean, it's possible that, they, that there could be a future. Obviously, it's never going to get anywhere close to what Android is because it can't do what Android does. Uh, but I could see it taking uh, market share from Apple. I think that's possible. Is you know, there's potential. I th I think the market share is probably going to come from BlackBerry, who's going to be another dead yep. company coming up. Excellent point. Um, the 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 market share, though, you know, um, I'm kind of I I have mixed opinions on where it's going to go. You know, they have a really nice tablet. They have some nice products. The what I hear from you know the industry and stuff is that it's the apps or people have a lot of issues with the apps and the closedness because there's a lot of control over the devs on what yep. they can do with some of the, on some of the apps and how they're supposed to look um, you know so I'm not sure how, how you know they've had a few years already it's not like Windows Phone just popped out this this operating mm. system last year no, that's it's been true. around for a few years now and you would have figured there would be a bigger buzz taking place yeah, but yeah. Who, who knows now now speaking Nokia wise they're a hardware manufacturer. They're no longer in the operating system game. Now, for them to become a profitable company and to be, you know, selling hardware, they need to be out there on as many phones as possible, whether it be Android, bad at Tizen. They need to be selling hardware because at the end of the day, the stockholders, which, you know, are very important, you know, they look at sales numbers and they see where this Windows venture has gained them. And it's been going steadily downhill consistently. And we're not, you know, Nokia was one of the largest manufacturers or was the largest manufacturer in the world at one point. And up until a couple of years ago, even when Android started, they were still the largest, even larger than Apple. And they are no longer there. They are, you know, falling free fall so fucking yeah, fast. They've, they've suffered, it's uh, not even uh, funny. Yeah. I mean, they've and, suffered quite a bit. I mean, they had to sell... Uh, Hardly any uh, production made done in Finland anymore. I think all the Lumias are made in China. Dude, um, they had they had to sell they had to sell Nokia House. They, they had, had to, to sell, sell their Nokia headquarters. House. How fucking bad yeah. could it be? When you're That's the what the New York Times had to do. They had to sell the whole headquarters. And then they rent it. Then they rent some of it back. I mean, I just, 
you know things are going wrong. <laughs> and you got to say that Elof, you know what, he came in with a vision, he made a choice. He went, you know, either go right with Android or go left with Windows. He obviously picked the wrong direction. You know, it, it maybe should have been a branch of taking more more devices on. Um, and he's another guy that I don't think is going to make it throughout the year because <laughs> I don't first wise the shareholders can be too happy with the way things are going. <laughs> Definitely. No, they love it. It's fine. There's going to be a lot of jobs lost this year. It's not going to be us. It's going to be some big boys in the industry, especially with these new operating systems coming out as well. They got to compete with them as well. Tizen. Yeah, exactly. A booty right. phone. A booty phone. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> exactly. Five percent market share by 2013, guaranteed. Mozilla phone, <laughs> all the way. No, Come Mozilla's on. Mozilla's not. Come Mozilla's on, gonna have like a point three percent that nobody's gonna want. Mozilla's gonna be selling phones in Zimbabwe. That's all I gotta be saying. <laughs> I love a Ubuntu. I will put a Ubuntu on anything. Yeah, I think I think the great thing about Ubuntu is you can actually put Ubuntu on anything. Yeah, absolutely. But a I'm lot so of these, excited. But how how do you know these guys breaking into the market on such a tight they market? There's so much money and they the, don't. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> it's as simple as that. And it's one of these things. It's like. Uh, this is what, um, you know, I've been using Linux for years, and I've used all sorts of distributions. I've used um, OpenSUSE, a lot of Ubuntu, uh, Linux Mint, uh, Red Hat, Fedora. Use Sandros. Oh, I tried, no. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the, the point I'm trying to make is that Linux is out there, but there's no marketing. So if Ubuntu phone go down the same road and they don't do any marketing, because Ubuntu don't, Canonical don't market, like... No. You don't, you don't, go, you don't go anywhere. I mean, there are some like emerging markets where you see like a small Ubuntu kiosk, but then like you have a look at what else is out there. There's no marketing. So how on earth do you enter the market? Sitting next to that friggin' Samsung massive display, yeah, exactly. with, you know, TVs and you know, yeah. changing your life and talking to fucking elephants. Well, there is a Ubuntu TV out, so of course <laughs> they could just. Oh, that's put fine a though. That's how that's how Linux is supposed to be. It's supposed to be under the radar for people who want to take gonna control be of their device. The it's going to be so far under the radar, you're not even going to know it exists. I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, yep. Doug. And that's another episode of the Android Headline Show. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks a lot.